Hello everybody, I am Arandhani Rosha. This is the first video released in my video tutorial regarding game development using XNA Game Studio. First, let's look at the agenda. In this video tutorial, I am going to describe I am going to discuss about a lot of things. First, game industry, then XNA framework and how XNA works, and then getting started with XNA. Environment of XNA in Visual Studio 2008, pipeline mechanism of XNA, and the sample game. Nowadays, the game industry is a very popular and very profitable industry. According to the DFC intelligence, in year 2009, the ga total game industry reached the 57 US billion dollars. Some, re some researchers say that total game development industry is larger than the film industry in the US. Okay, let's move into the topic. First of all, let's see what is XNA. Basically, XNA is a game development framework and tool set which provided by Microsoft. And the XNA framework works with .NET framework. It provides more attractiveness to the developer. Okay. Then let's see how XNA works. XNA has some sequence of built-in methods which triggered within the life cycle of XNA. First of all, initialize device. Before starting the game, the computer should prepare the graphic card of your computer to the game. This process happens inside initialize devices. Next process is load resources in your game you have lot of resources images 3d models audios such kind of things before starting the game you should have all the resources available to the game this process happen inside load resources content next one is update this is step created with three things user inputs game logic and the events game events after update state the sequence of method goes to the drawing state inside the drawing state you will see everything in the game in this state sequence first two states initialize device and load resources happen before starting the game Update state and drawing states are only states which you s see in the screen. Those two steps loop until you end the game. Okay, let's move to the final two states. We have already received the graphic card on the system to our game. We have to release the graphic card. That process happens inside closed devices state. After that, free resources state. In load resources state, we load all the content needed to the game into the memory. We have to release those memory areas back to the system. That process happened inside free resources state. This is the way actually XNA implement all the states we discussed previously. Initialize method, load content method, unload method, update method and draw method. Ok, it's time to start the XNA. Before starting XNA, we have to download the framework. You can go to creators.xna.com website and download XNA Game Studio 3 and install it in your computer. After you install the XNA framework, you should have an IDE to develop the game. You can use either Visual Studio 2008 or Visual Studio 2008 Express Edition. In my computer, I have installed Visual Studio 2008. Okay, let's start new project. First, click File, open new project. After you install the framework, you can find XNA Game Studio 
in here in here in xna framework 3 it provides three platform to the user windows game xbox 360 game or zoom game now we are going to develop windows game then select the windows game type your game name here and click OK. This is the interface you get when you start the game. Coding area, solution explorer and property window. Inside solution explorer you can see lot of icons. First one sample game that is your solution name and second one property. This contain all the details, uh, all the details regarding to your game, like assembly informations. And next one is references. References contain some DLL files needed to work the XNA framework. Next one is content folder. This folder belongs to a mechanism called pipeline mechanism. Okay, now let's see what's pipeline mechanism is. In the loading state, you load all the all the things needed to the game into the memory. In the XNA framework, you can't directly insert whatever things in your game into the running game. You have to insert all the things into the pipeline and go through the process called pipeline. After that pipeline process, it will create an intermediate result. Then only the intermediate result you can plug into the running game. These are the standard input format for the pipeline. Image files, audio files, 3D image files, material files and font files. If you need more than this file format, you can create by own, your own. Ok, let's move back to our sample game again. As I said, before we start the game, we have to load all the all the uh, all the relevant information into our content folder. Inside content folder, I am creating another fold call, folder called images. Inside to that image folder, I will add existing items. That means my images. as three images I am creating in with this game background, ball and tray now you can see background image, ball image and tray image now I am going to draw the image to do that first we need a texture let's name it as back then we should load the image into the back variable scroll down into the content load method then back equals content dot load we should give the data type text 2d then the path of the file my background file name is background when you give the name remember that only give the name not not to include the extension You can see my image is located inside the image folder. In the content pipeline, it only gives the path for the content folder. So we have to import insert the image fo 